He's alive. Is your Bible with you? Something is about to happen right now. Amen. I know that because of the veracity of the Word of God, it will deliver the treasures of the covenant and bring His counsel to pass. If your Bible is with you, let me turn to two passages. This is a word church. It makes my life and my work easy. Turn to Matthew chapter 26 very quickly, very quickly. And Hebrews chapter 12. And let's stand for the reading of the word together. Amen. I will speak just for a few minutes. Praise God. If you would stand for the reading of the word. Amen. Matthew chapter 26 and Hebrews chapter 12. Glory to God. Have you found it? Please shout aloud, yes, if you're in the house. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Are you there? Matthew 26, I'll read from verse 26. Please read with me. It's on the screens as well. Verse 26, and as they were eating, the Bible says that Jesus took bread and blessed it. Matthew 26, verse 26, please. Amen. Verse 26. Glory to God. Amen. Verse 26. I'll proceed because of time. Now as they were reading, verse 26, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink all of it all of it for this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for the remission of sins hebrews did you find it chapter 12 i'll read from verse 22 are you ready for the word this morning amen Hebrews 12, 22, well, you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God. You have come to the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to an innumerable company of angels. You have come to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, which is written in heaven. You have come to the judge of all and to the spirit of just men made perfect you have come to jesus the mediator the initiator the operator and executor of the new covenant you have come to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things something is speaking for you this morning can i say that again something is speaking for you Speaking for your home, think, speaking for your children, speaking for your business, speaking for your career, speaking for your ministry, speaking for your health and healing, speaking for your defense, speaking for your provision, speaking for your present, speaking for your future. You have come to Jesus, the mediator of this covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks on your behalf. Lift up your arm of strength. If you're left-handed like I, you can lift up your left hand. If you're right-handed like I always say, you're forgiven. You can lift up your right hand as well. Those of us that are left-handed know we're more gifted than the right-handed people. But, but, but it's okay. I'm still holding the microphone. And, you know, if you, if you, you know, you can lift up both of your hands if you and pretend to be ambidextrous. Whichever way, lift up your hands. The lifting of your hands is an indicator. It's indicative of your agreement with the word you're about to hear. You're lifting up your word to signify and say to the host of heaven, I'm here and I'm registering my name, the next candidate for a miracle. Just by the lifting up of your hands, you are threatening the kingdom of darkness and making them aware.
aware that God is in the house to do you good that there is blood that is speaking on your behalf right now just by the lifting up of your hands you're saying whatever it is that came against you God is speaking for you this morning and you will not leave this service in the presence of God the way you came whatever was chasing you you will chase after this service and God will be God shout aloud yes if you're in the house father i ask in the name that is above every other name that you would make available in this pulpit and appeals the anointing that is required that we may handle your engrafted word with meekness give us an open heaven that your word that it may find its course and glorify the father let there be an indelible inscription on the table of every heart your immutable unwavering unchanging unfaving unceasing and unrelenting counsel do what only you can accomplish in this place and above all i pray you will receive glory you will will receive honor you will receive praise and somebody shouted the loudest shout an amen like you want God to hear that you're in the house you may take your seats ladies and gentlemen you're welcome in Jesus name the subject matter of my brief dialogue this morning is there is much power in the blood there is much power in the blood by the time i'm done some of the scriptures we just read will make by god's grace a little more sense can we talk this morning for a few moments let me refer us and start from hebrews chapter 12 or rather let me back up a bit and go to psalm 91 i saw it on the screen earlier on and i thought wow so let me go and let me start from psalms 91 and and take it from there are you in the house psalm 91 says he is committed to your cause he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty is that what your bible says i will say who am i talking to this morning he is my refuge he's my fortress he's my god and in him i will trust tap your neighbor say, i will trust him i will trust him surely now say it with conviction say surely surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and the noisome pestilence verse 4 it says surely he who dwells in the sacred place verse 4 verse 4 thank you are you there he shall cover you with his feathers under his wings you will take refuge his truth shall be your shield and your buckler verse 5 let me say to somebody this morning whatever trap whatever snare whatever fowler whatever ambushment whatever that they talk wherever they are waiting in darkness whatever they wrote on the hand wall against you wherever orchestration whatever manifestations whatever is speaking contrary to your welfare whatever it is that your enemies are plotting and planning wherever you go whatever they try let me tell you now there is a place that you can roam to that you will find safety shout aloud yes if you're in the house i'm coming your way just wait for me bear with me a few minutes you shall not be afraid <laughs> now to help me you know to help me please jump to your feet and go tell three people fear not fear not fear not uh -huh. you will not be afraid you will not you will you will not be afraid for the terror by night or the arrows that fly by noonday 
you will not be afraid of the pestilence that walks in the darkness you will not be afraid of the destruction that wastes by noonday who is here that is a part of this covenant god says you will not be afraid you have no reason to fear a thousand may fall at your side ten thousands at your right hand but i tell you it will not come near i said it will not come near they may be falling like flies it will not happen to you are you in the house bear with me it does not make a lot of sense ladies and gentlemen to tell a person to not fear what is a reality let's please allow our thinking to be engaged despite our faith when you tell a man fear not when there's reason to fear you have to give a reason not to fear hello you can't tell a person that is hungry don't worry the hunger is there so you must tell them something also that negates the fear that is with reason the bible does not say that there is not a waster the bible does not say here there's not a destroyer the bible does not say there are not arrows that are flying by night but it says fear not tell your neighbor don't be afraid you have no reason to fear because there is a remedy I, uh, bear with give me 10 minutes because i said because there is a remedy hebrew says you have come to mount zion you have come to the city of the living god you have come to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn you have come to the souls of just men made perfect you have come to jesus the mediator of the covenant you have come to the blood of sprinkling therefore i submit to you you have no reason to fear wait with me there is a potent latent capable able response to the arrow that is flying by night there is a reason why the destroyer may come but it will not come now you're dwelling oh, who am i talking <laughs> talk to me somebody we have come to jesus the mediator of a new covenant or contract and to the blood of sprinkling can we talk about that for a few moments just give me 10 minutes bear with me you have to understand ladies and gentlemen that the 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 force the, the reason why the waster has energy has a right of passage is the error of humanity the soul that sins it shall die where are you this morning shall yes if you heard me the authority of destruction is error there was never a destroyer before there was error and when error was introduced the power or right of passage of the destroyer to destroy was granted are you with me because this is the law the soul that sins it shall die and the ultimate objective of the destroyer is to kill and destroy where are you in the house this morning but the bible says if you read hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 the bible says almost all things are by blood purged what someone shall washed i need your help this morning please just give me tell me shout washed if you're in the house all things are by blood purged and without the shedding of blood there can be no remission of the consequence of our error therefore without the shedding of blood stay with me bear with me without the shedding of blood the destroyer has the right to destroy don't fool yourself the destroyer without the shedding of blood can do as he pleases anybody that tells you otherwise is lying to you with 
without the shedding of blood the destroyer when adam and eve sinned man of god in the garden there was never a record of death before the fall of man when adam and eve sinned in the garden god came down and he said adam where are you he said he's hiding and god said yeah that you have done what i told you not to do and the bible says he took skin of a beast that was destroyed and clothed the nakedness of adam and eve as a result of their error and shed the blood of that animal as a remission for the error because the soul that sins it shall die and so something had to die are you with me something had to die in the place of the man that had done wrong because if something had not died the man would have had to die hey travel with me travel with me we talk about the passover god himself was going to visit egypt and he said i will pass through egypt and the angel of death will walk with me now the angel of death the destroyer was enabled by the error of the nation at the time and God said, Israel, if you will be preserved, every household, every family, go and find the lamb and slaughter it, shed his blood, dip his up in the blood and mark the doorposts of your household. So as I'm moving through Egypt, as the destroyer sees the blood, he says the destroyer will not be able to enter into your house why because it is evident by the blood on the door that something has died for the sake of those that are in the house who am i talking to this morning therefore the destroyer will not be able to enter your house because something has already died and so israel was preserved but egypt was destroyed because there was no sacrifice of blood that was speaking for who is blood speaking for this morning are you in the house so i explain this to say that we must understand that when the bible says fear not <laughs> he is giving us a reason that there is something that we can do that nullifies that makes of no effect that breaks the yoke that destroys the power of the destroyer because you are able to say look at the blood that is on the doorpost something has already been sacrificed now oh, are you in the house now here is the problem the problem is that the blood of goats and bulls <laughs> the blood of lambs and animals was not able to deal with the problem because you must understand that when adam and eve fell creation fell with him because as the king is so is the kingdom and because man was the crown prince of creation when man fell God said the earth is cursed for your sake and so any animal that was slaughtered to cover the sins of man it was a temporary thing because the animal that you killed was also a fallen animal hey where are we this <laughs> so, so if you study the scriptures and now I've left the pulpit the reason is I don't if I go to the Bible and start breaking it down it will take too much time so you will find in the scriptures that they had to keep every day they will bring another beast they will bring a lamb they will bring an umbrella they will keep every day they will be sacrificing for sin because the covering of that blood was a temporary thing it could not fix the problem permanently 
talk to me somebody and then God said ah let us find us a more excellent sacrifice stand to your feet and go tell three people there's a better solution there's a better solution oh my goodness where are you go tell somebody there's a better solution there's a better solution there is a more excellent sacrifice uh-huh yes yes uh-huh are you with me a more excellent sacrifice a more excellent ministry than the ministry of goats and bulls and cows are you with me hallelujah so revelation chapter 5 says and again i'm jumping so let me jump to verse 9 allow me and they sung a new song saying you are worthy to take the book to open the seals for you were slain mm -hmm. and you have redeemed us unto god by your blood every kindred every nation every tongue and people you have become the sacrifice unblemished and without sin so jesus became the mediator stay with me i'm nearly there jesus became the mediator he became the orchestrator he became the executor of a new contract that the contract of goats and bulls was not enough so i will leave heaven without sin the hypostatic union of god divine and god human i will come in the flesh and become a man and will come the sacrifice on the cross and my blood will be spilled so that there is no need to keep entering in to make the same sacrifices and my blood speaks better things than the blood of abel now i cannot but say something about that you see because when blood is spilt blood speaks Ooh. can i say it again when blood is spilt it speaks i adjure somebody by the mercies of god allow me to take a little digression i appeal to you by the mercies of god stop shedding blood because blood speaks and blood speaks beyond the grave i'm not talking about putting a gun to somebody's head you killed somebody with your tongue their blood will speak hey, who am i talking to shout hallelujah if you're in the house be careful whose blood you are spilling because you don't know where they are in this thing and their blood i've seen it i can tell us stories abel was slaughtered by his brother king and his blood was crying vengeance say god my blood will not be shed in vain but there is another blood that has been shed rather than speaking vengeance it's speaking mercy speaking grace it's the blood of the advocate that is seated on the right hand of glory that persistently consistently and without ceasing is making intercession on our behalf that's the blood that is speaking and so jesus became the mediator for the blood for the for the children of god that are under the blood shout yes if you're in the house can we wrap this thing up because i'm not finished which brings us <laughs> which brings us to the scriptures that say jesus took the cup and he blessed it and he said this is my blood drink it in remembrance in remembrance of what what we've been talking about so far he said drink it in remembrance of me for this is the blood of the new covenant <laughs> i happen to be uh, okay i in my village 
in Nigeria, I happen to have police escort. I have for a while. And uh, armed escort. Blue lights, all of that nonsense. One day, a few years ago, man of God, we were traveling from Lagos to back to my village. Like I said, I'm a village man. There was confusion on the expressway. Chaos. The place was in a mess. Middle of the night, it was about 11 o'clock at night. So everybody pulled out. In fact, some people were turning around and driving down the expressway the wrong side of the road. So of course, we had to stop to find out what was going on. They said there are armed robbers operating down the road. Someone said, fair not, fair not, fair not. Is that how you're going to say? Say, fair not, fair not. There were armed robbers operating down the road. In fact, at some point, we could hear shooting. Yeah, Nigeria, you should come. It was that bad. So we had to stop because people did not know what to do, turn back, and you know, it was really bad. So my car, my escort vehicle with the lights, my pilot, my escort, my everybody, we all stopped trying to figure out what to do. Go back to Lagos. It was confusion. So my police officers got out of the car saying, okay, what should we do? It was really bad, man of God. I too, I got out of the car. Okay, what's going, <laughs> what's going on? So I got out of the car, looking around, trying to figure out what to do. When four or five men stepped out of the bush right next to where we stopped, with guns in their belts, the armed robbers that people were running from came out right next to us where we were pulled up. And they looked at us. God is my witness. They looked at us and greeted us, good evening. <laughs> and I replied, good evening. And they walked by and went on. Hallelujah! They walked by and they went on. Wait, wait, wait. Sit, sit down, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Let me talk to you because of your standing. Let me, let me tell you. What I just said is not a story I wrote in a book or read in a book. I was traveling from Lagos on another occasion. These stories I don't tell my wife. Because if I tell my wife, she will extract my permission. Say, please, you can come back to stay in London. It's okay. So I don't tell her these stories. We were pulled up. We were, we were driving again at night, and one of the vehicles broke down. So uh, my motorcade stopped, trying to fix it. So I said to one of the police officers with me, go and stand in the front, because that area is known for armed robbers. While we were there trying to figure out what to do with the car, this bus just pulled up. It just stopped behind us. There were about five or six men in the bus. So one of the people with me went to meet them. Oh, can we help you? Now, maybe they wanted to see if they could help us. And I noticed he was there for a while. <laughs> he didn't say anything. Somebody came out of the bus and sat down in the side of the road like that with a gun on his lap. Somebody that came out of the bus. The other guy went to see. Now, the, the policeman with the gun was in front. He came, he went to the bus to ask what happened. And when he came back, he was telling me that all of the people in the bus were heavily armed. So actually, they stopped like, right, this is fish for tonight. When he looked in the bus, I said, can we help you? You know what one of them said, Apostle General? The man said in the bus, said, that if it was not that all of you are carrying guns, and we are carrying guns, don't stop here again in the future. And they called the guy that was sitting by the road to enter the bus and they drove off. That day, only one policeman was carrying a gun. But the armed robbers saw everybody carrying guns. Ah. Tell your neighbor, fear not, fear not, fear not. Man of God, I'm going somewhere. 
when the angel of death passed by egypt god said put the blood on your doorpost he said but don't leave the house because if you step out of your house you are not covered but jesus said drink it internalize it that day if it was the old covenant i was not in my house the blood of the animal would not have covered me but i have taken in ah, i have taken in let me say it again i have taken in so anywhere i go any place i visit the blood that i have internalized is speaking for me better things than armed robbers better things than gunmen better things than my enemies because i have broken blood bread and the blood I am a father. He will never, never fail me. Talk to me, somebody. I have a father. I am a father. He will, he will never, never, never fail me. <laughs> Jesus is my father. He will never, never fail me. Yes, yes, yes. yes. He's the rock of ages. Never, never fail. Everybody in the house, come we to have a father. That will never. He will never, never fail us. He will never, never fail us. Jesus is our Father. He will never, never fail us. Rock of ages, never, never fail. I have a Father. 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 Jesus is my 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 father. He will never, never fail me. Rock of ages. Rock of ages. He will never, never, never fail. Look at me, everybody here. I'm done. Look at, look at me. you have come to jesus the mediator of this new covenant and then he explains he said you have come to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better this is what he was saying that there is no believer that understands these things that can walk in fear after that you cannot be the victim of a destroyer unless the blood cannot speak yeah. say to your neighbor it's not possible it's not possible a thousand may fall to your side tens of thousands to your right hand i'm telling you it cannot come near unless they want to take jesus back to the cross are you in the house there is power in the blood that is speaking for us see what is going on across africa especially in the sub-region is a terrible thing but we are not of the company of people that are afraid because we know what is talking the power of the destroyer is found in error but the main thing that you see uh, in medicine there is what you call causative treatment in many medical management and there is palliatory treatment so you have a headache because you have defective vision really you should get glasses but you are using Panadol or paracetamol. The paracetamol will deal with the pain, the headache, but it's not dealt with the real problem. Hello, are you in the house? Yes. It's like your car, you're driving down the road and the 
petrol gauge of your car is flashing you that you are running out of petrol. When you use paracetamol, you are just removing the fuse. So the petrol gauge is no longer flashing. It does not mean you are not running out of petrol. But when you deal with the root cause, you deal with the problem. Jesus came to deal with the root cause. And he dealt with it finally. Ladies and gentlemen, there is power in the blood. I said there is power in the blood. Rise to your feet wherever you are. Are you in the house this morning? Are you in the house this morning? I was in a meeting in uh, Middle England two, three weeks ago and I want to share this with us briefly before I take my seat unknown to me there was a lady that was paralyzed on her right hand side she was paralyzed to the extent this is about two weeks ago three weeks ago she was paralyzed to the extent that she could not undress herself her her husband had to undress her she was paralyzed to the extent she could no longer drive. She couldn't even open the door of her car. She couldn't carry anything with her right hand. I did not know anything about this. But I was at the meeting, as I always do. Like I said, I'm not a guest here. I said, everybody, please clap your hands, I said. And people clapped and clapped, and I said, stop. I said, for the sake... Hmm of the unbelievers that are here i said let me say it again even if you are not a believer clap your hands because the blood that we have imbibed knows no bounds of its capacity so everybody started clapping again this was on a Saturday night, Sunday morning, just before I got up to preach. They said there's a testimony. This woman came up. She happened to be the personal assistant of the general as overseer of that church. And she said, please, I want to say something. Last night, when pastor said we should clap, she said I was just looking at him, that these rascals have started again. You know, when you have been in church for too long, you begin to take certain things for granted. So they have come again then he will tell us to clap now and then he will take an offering <laughs> so she was just looking at me until i stopped everybody and said even if you don't believe clap your hands so reluctantly because one hand was paralyzed she did this clapping her hands like that she said when she left the service she had lifted up the hand before she even noticed and she said oh, what happened is the excitement she got home and she undressed herself without remembering to call her husband. She thought it's a mistake. By the following morning, before service, she drove to her pastor's house and said, I do not understand what has happened here. That my hand is fully, 100% restored. Now, now, now. I share this testimony not for a man because I cannot heal a headache. If God does not do it, I'm wasting my time. So I'm not sharing it for me. I'm not a healer. I'm just a foolish vessel that God uses. But I'm sharing this testimony because that woman did not believe. And she was, she was scheduled for surgery one week later. She, of course. That was the end of that. This morning, I stand on the authority of the word and the blood that is speaking. And in 30 something years of preaching this gospel, it has never failed. I am going to give it because this is home for me. So this is not show business. 
I'm going to ask you if there is sickness in your body. You, that sickness, not you, made the mistake of following you to church this morning. <laughs> Let me see that. Man of God. The sickness should have known and stayed at home. You followed us here. We have come to the blood of sprinkling and the mediator of the covenant. For that sickness to be arguing with you is Jesus is arguing with. Whatever, whatever they said, I've seen people with HIV and cancer rise up, healed completely. Put your hand on your head if that's you, and everybody help. I want you to clap your hands like it is the last thing you're ever going to do. Violently, because as you clap them, angels are clapping with you right now. As you clap them, the elders in the presence of God are clapping with you. They are saying that you are clapping for God. We must join you and clap with you for God. Clap them. Let, let me see which sickness will argue with your clapping this morning. We rebuke cancer. We rebuke high blood pressure. We rebuke sugar diabetes. We rebuke arthritic pain. As you clap them, clap them, clap them. Every type of issue of blood. We rebuke you. Back pain. We rebuke you. Right now, as you clap your hands. Every kind of emotional, mental disorder. We come against you right now. As we clap our hands, we lose your hold, lose your grip. Hallelujah! Clap them, clap them, clap them, clap them. Clap them. Hey, go, 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 go. Now, lose your hold. Don't be tired, don't be tired. Don't be tired, don't be tired. Father, we thank you, 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 we thank you for the power of the blood. We thank you for the blood that speaks better things. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. That blood that will never lose its power. We thank you. We clap our hands and celebrate the efficacious blood that is speaking on our behalf. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You're worthy of praise. There is power, power. Wonder, wonder, working power in the blood, in the blood of the Lamb, of the Lord. There is power. There is power. Wonder, work power. Wonder, working power in the blood, in the blood, show blood. Of the Lord. Can everybody do that together in the house this morning? There 